Hi everyone, how are you? Um, today we have an exciting recipe, but I was just thinking on the way over here today that we were going to film and I was thinking that I am way more comfortable on camera now than I was a few months ago when I started. Really comfortable just thinking that I'm talking directly to you, whoever you are. And I was thinking that it's equitable to learning how to cook. And so all of you guys out there that aren't comfortable with cooking yet, just know that it's a learning process and that we will go along and we'll stumble and eventually you'll be cooking and you'll be like, hey, it wasn't really that hard today. I felt pretty comfortable in the kitchen. So I'm feeling more comfortable in the kitchen with you. So all that said, let's get started. We have amazing squash blossoms today. They are beautiful and delicious. Full disclosure, I've never made a fried squash blossom, so we're gonna do it together. So I went on mexicankitchen.com and I pulled up a squash blossom recipe. That said, we don't have those ingredients. We still have the manchego from our open house the other night, and I do have eggs. The recipe calls for beer. If you don't have any beer or you don't drink, you can always use milk and baking powder to give it that like rise that I suppose the beer is gonna do. Um, and then I'm going to add some Mexican crema in with the cheese because the recipe online calls for ricotta cheese, but we're not doing that. So even though I haven't done it, um, I'm going to make it up sort of as I go. But so I think we'll start first with showing you guys how to cut and prepare a squash blossom. They're very prevalent at the farmer's markets right now. And because we have amazing food forward produce, we get a lot of them, and so that means tomorrow if you pick up at Gaia's Gifts, you'll get some too. And so I hope that you make this recipe and let us know how you think, what you think, and also if you did anything different than what I'm doing. So that said, this is a squash blossom, and I've cleaned off a pair of regular scissors because we don't have kitchen sears, and honestly, it seemed a little bulky to do with a knife. So I cleaned these very well, and I just snipped off the stem and then I rinsed them under water to get off all of the dirt and then I laid them on that towel to dry and then I blotted the top and just made sure that it was nice and dry. And then it's a very delicate flower and I know that you guys really aren't seeing this on camera, but it is a flower so it does open completely. You can imagine it just like opening like a little star. And so what I'll do is I'll find a way to open it I'll just kind of stick my thumb in there to keep it open. I'm going to take the scissors and I'm just going to cut all the way down in one slice. And inside, again, this is probably frustrating for you all that don't see this, but inside there is a yellow pistol. And so that needs to come out. So the only reason why you really have to open this is to get out the inside pistol. I'm going to take it out. And so it's basically just like a little piece of pollen or the, and you know, it's what makes the flower the flower. So that you don't want, and now it's ready. So I've prepared all of these, and we'll set that aside and we will get into the filling. So today, as I said, we're not using ricotta cheese. We're gonna use about a half cup of manchengo. I grated it up. And because ricotta is more um, liquidy in consistency, I'm just gonna add a little bit of Mexican crema, but it doesn't have to be a lot. I just don't want to feel like I'm shoving the squash blossoms full of like dry cheese um, because this should be a little more um, moist than that. Um, you know, I just learned also that some people have a problem with the word moist, so sorry if I offended anyone. I don't really understand, but I'm perfectly fine with that word. I'm only gonna add a tablespoon. This is just to really add a little bit of uh, better consistency for stuffing. Okay, and then I've sauteed some garlic and some onions. I sauteed uh, half of an onion finely chopped and three cloves of garlic. So I'm gonna add that in there. And for you, those of you who are not familiar with sauteing, please check out some of our previous videos. We um, go through sauteing a lot in those videos. So if you aren't familiar with the process or you're feeling, feeling a little overwhelmed, you can email us at info at or you can just look up the old videos and 
kind of find a way to catch up to this. So sorry if you don't know how. Um, and now that that's done, I'll add a little bit of pepper. Just like a half of a tablespoon. We might, that actually might not be enough. We'll see, we'll see what happens. Maybe I'll add a little bit more cream. So maybe I'll add a tablespoon and a half. If it comes out, oh, there we go. That feels better. So it was a tablespoon and a half. I'm really making this up as I go, but I think that that's the right consistency. And now we'll see what happens. We're gonna take one squash blossom. You know what I think I'll do is better is I'm gonna take all of these off of here. We'll remove the towel and then once we stuff them, we can place them right back onto that. Okay, so we don't need this anymore either. Okay, so right where I've cut it in half, to open it up, that is where I'm going to put just a little bit of cheese. And it was about, I would say, a teaspoon of this mixture. And I guess I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna like squish it together. Clearly, this side is open, so if you overstuff it, it's gonna be like stuffed ricotta or something, it's just gonna explode. So you kind of wanna put it together, lay it face down, um, and hope that it doesn't open up. That's the best we can do. Okay, so we filled all of the squash blossoms and we're going to make the batter now. So this calls for a third cup of flour, a quarter cup of beer, or a quarter cup of milk and about a half of a teaspoon of baking soda, baking powder, I'm sorry. One egg. And a little salt. We'll just mix it up. This seems really thick to me, but we'll just see what happens. I don't know. I might add a little bit more beer, quite honestly. This doesn't seem like the right consistency to me. So I added a fourth cup of a fourth cup of beer. So I do think that this is a little bit thick, but I'm going to follow the recipe. I would add a little bit more beer, but because they know what they're doing on MexicanCooking.com and I've never made this recipe, I think I will follow this because batter is particular and I would probably, I'm wrong. Um, all right, so that's done. That's all there is to it. And then we're going to dip the squash blossoms in here. And I have this tray set aside for after we fry them, we'll just set the tray back on this tray and we'll let them drip a little bit and dry off from being fried. A lot of things you can add like paper towels to a plate and kind of like get off any excess oil, but it is nice when you have a grill nearby because it doesn't smash down like the very delicate little things that are going to be fried. So let's dip it. And I guess we'll just start like that. We'll just do it. So this batter does have egg in it, so you do have to be careful to not have any cross-contamination and get egg on any surfaces or cutting boards or your hands without your hands being extra clean. You don't want to transfer any of that because egg does carry salmonella and that kind of a bummer to end up in the emergency room over the weekend. So let's try these without getting sick and wash our hands and keep eggs off of surfaces. So I'm not even sure if I'm quite doing this right, but I feel like it's working.
Okay, so with that done, let's go over to the stove. We'll fry these up, we'll set these down. And then just to plate it and to finish up, I've sauteed some yellow zucchini or yellow squash, Mexican squash, and some fava beans, which are totally delicious. And you can pick those up at Gaia's Gift tomorrow as well. And I'll show you just how to open a fava bean when I come back to the stove or from the stove. Okay, see you over there. Okay, so we're at the stove. We have our beautiful little zucchini blossoms. We have a pan full of oil. I put about an eighth, it's probably about an eighth of an inch tall, which I suppose is probably about a half of a quarter of a cup, maybe a little bit more than a quarter of a cup of oil. You can use any oil of your choice. Um, we have olive oil today. And when you're frying, the key word is carefully. So anything you put in a frying pan of oil, you want to be very gentle. You want to treat it like a fragile baby. And regardless, very common to have oil splatter at you. So you kind of want to just make sure that you're never throwing anything into the pan while the oil is so hot. And we're going to cook these for about a minute on both sides and then we'll transfer them onto this rack. And if you don't have a rack at home, totally fine. Just put paper towels or a dish towel down just so your food isn't full of oil um, when you're ready to eat it. We're back. We made our zucchini blossoms. They probably aren't the most beautiful, but I think they're gonna taste really good. And I really wanna know what you think if you make this recipe, because we're kind of doing it together for the first time. Just a side note, I sauteed the Mexican squash and some fava beans on the stove. And again, if you don't know how to saute yet, please look at previous videos. We have a lot of videos on there where we saute and go over that cooking skill. And if you still are confused or need help, please email us and we would be glad to give you some tips. So just so you know, because there's a lot of these tomorrow that you can pick up, this is a fava bean. It's beautiful. It has a thicker skin than a pea, so it doesn't break as easily. But you can do this a few ways. You can use a knife to cut it open. You can just break it open like this and you just basically take out the beans. So this is an actually quite big. So there's four of them in here. Usually you get about three sometimes too, and that's it. So you can boil these. As I said, I sauteed them. Just a side note, don't be afraid of this. It's weird when you haven't seen a vegetable before, it's a little intimidating to not know what to do with it. So there you go, now you know what to do with it. Let's plate this up. So we have a bowl that is clean, but it's always good to double check. Um, we're going to take the fava beans, Sorry, I'm blocking you out. Bad camera angle. And then we'll just add the, um, let me get a knife. We'll just add a few zucchini blossoms. This one's really pretty. And then I did heat up some tomato sauce that you can pick up tomorrow as well. And it's a little bland, so I, or I just added some salt, some pepper, some garlic powder, and garlic, um, did I say garlic powder already? Onion powder. So um, that's pretty much it. I mean, it's easy to doctor things up with flavor if you don't have another option. And I guess I'll just put it in here, like a little bit of sauce. And that's our lunch today. So it took about, I mean, if you're not making enough zucchini blossoms for like a family of 10 and you just want to do this at home, you could quarter that ricotta recipe and make four zucchini blossoms. The whole thing would probably take you about 20 minutes with the saute. Um, you do it your way. Let us know what you think. Here we are, stuffed zucchini blossoms, sauteed fava beans, and Mexican squash.